Hi, everybody. It's Andre with the Eaglesoft Field Guide. I'm here with uh, a longtime fielder, Denise, from Wythe Family Dental. How are you there? Good, good. Hello, good. everyone. Great. So we're going to open up my, I'm going to share my Eaglesoft screen, and we're going to take a look at, can you see that? Yes. Cool. All right. I'm going to put you over there. So we're going to go through uh, a pre-authorization, pre-determination, whichever you want to call it, uh, from start to finish and kind of talk through what happens with pre-Ds and how they work, don't work, you know, uh, what happens in it with Eaglesoft. Um, one really important thing, guys, if you create pre-authorizations and then at any point in the history of things, you um, change your fees for whatever reason. Um, it's possible, depending on how you change your fees, um, to it will delete every single pre-authorization that's out there, all right? And it makes sense because you pre-authorized, I mean, it's like asking somebody to borrow their car and then all of a sudden you wind up taking their boat. <laughs> You've changed the, the authorization process. So just so you know that that is an, uh, something that could happen. So. Um, and you've run into this a few times where you try to pre-authorize something and then something happens and the claim gets deleted. Is that yes. right? Yes. All right. So, and you get, you're in a general practice or a specialty practice? Or... It's general dentistry, but we do do some implants and also uh, Invisalign. Awesome. All right. So I, I've got a patient up here. This is, you guys see me using this test patient all the time, Hank Aaron. I always use that because AA is always going to be my first person on my list. So okay. I'm going to go into his chart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, get him out of pediatrics here. Select dog, go to permanent. And let's, let's just do um, a pre-D for scaling and root planning. And okay. I, you know, not that I would ever do this, but um, so what I'm going to do is let's go up to my and I actually have a pre-D that I already kind of made up. So we're gonna, I'm gonna follow this. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna do two quads of scaling and root planning on this guy. Where's my mouse? Yeah, I lost my mouse. Okay, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna do um, upper left and I'm gonna do my scaling and root planning, which is down here under my pair of maintenance. I'm gonna do that one. And there is a proposed service and I'm gonna do my lower left and do the same thing of scaling root planning, full quad. Okay, done. Now let's send it for pre-authorization. So I'm yes. gonna go to my treatment plan and yes. obviously uh, the, the front would be typically doing this. Let's do a new plan and mm -hmm. let's call this SRP without the T. And we're gonna use those services that we proposed. There they are. My standard fee is $253 per quad. I adjust off $63.25 on each quad. So my allowance, because this guy has, I think, met life, uh, oh. is $189.75. And then insurance is paying 80% of that. This comes up this way because I have a fee schedule in. Do you use fee schedules in your office? We, or we have our network? own fees in there, but we do not have a fee schedule. All right. But are you in network with insurance? We are. Okay. So this is, and again, depending on the setup, this, I have mine set up using a fee schedule. I have actually the MetLife fees in here. So you can okay. see this is my standard fee, what I adjust, and then the MetLife fees show here. Okay. And then 80% of that would be that number. All right. So that is a completed uh, treatment plan. We want to change this into a pre-authorization. Right. So I'm going to process this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I get, this is my treatment plan for my patient, but we're pre-authorizing. So we're gonna hit that. And you can see, I've actually named my treatment plans based on what I was doing. So crowns yes. and fillings and then my SRP, all right? I always do this by name and never by date. So it's really clear what I'm doing, all right? My SRP, and then I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna submit my claim. I'm submitting it manually because I don't wanna really send it to an insurance company. Right. Submit manually. Boom, done, it's out there and we're, we're now waiting. So we're getting gray hair like this, waiting for our pre-authorization to come back, right? <laughs> so now we finally get the pre-authorization back and boom, here it is back from the insurance company and it's gonna list out all the things that we, that we were doing. And okay. My mouse is stuck, hold on. Let's see if we get it unstuck. Hold on. I might have to reopen it. 
Where's my desktop? There it is. All right, let's see if this will stay open. Okay, so there's my pre-auth. So we sent in 253, they showed our allowance, and then they showed our approve amount, exactly what I said that they were gonna approve, which was 157.75 on okay. each of those services. Okay. All right. So this is typically what we get back. And what we really want to make sure we know is there is a pre-authorization number. This, I made this up, so this is not a real thing. But okay. we typically get a pre-authorization number back yes. when we get this. So we're going to go, I'm going to slide that down here so it's just out of the way. We're going to go back to this guy's treatment plan. And let's look at that pre-auth for the SRP. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go in here to more information uh -huh. and show the approved amounts. Is that what you typically do? That's what we do. Uh, down here where the estimated primary is, we typically type in what that, if it's changed exactly. from what, because we don't have those fees in there that like you have yours okay. in there. All right. So ours changed. So we'll, we'll update that and then hit, uh, check that little mark and hit okay. Perfect. So I'm gonna do the same thing for both. Uh, more information, check my box. Now we're good. So now those fees are locked in. We can see the asterisks there and it also changed the color. So we know that that's set. Right. I'm gonna reprocess this. Yes. All right, don't need to check any boxes there. I'm just really just, that is part of saving it. Okay. Now we're done with the uh, do, uh, creating the pre-auth, putting the information into Eagles Off, saving that information. Now it's time to actually treat the patient. Right. She comes in, we open up a chart. We do our services and I'm going to highlight both services, right click, post to walkout. Now they are in walkout, save it. The clinical team is done. Now we have to go out to our front desk to actually finish the walkout. Right. And now I'm going to do it from here just for the sake of doing it quickly. And here are our services. They're in red so we can tell that they've been planned and mm -hmm. I'm going to use those services and complete my walkout. I'm going to save it, process my walkout. Now, we're ready to send our claim. Very important to put our pre-authorization number in here. Yes. <laughs> cool. So now here's, a, here's one thing that I've noticed, and you know, I, I've seen this a few times. If we don't put a pre-authorization in here, that the number from the pre-auth in, then a couple things happen. Um, the insurance company can deny it because they can say this service was already pre-authorized and now you're doing a different procedure. Yeah. Uh, so we really have to make sure we're putting that pre-auth number in from our claim that I can't get to show up here. I think this must be a Zoom issue. Uh, but we're gonna go. All right, so make sure you're putting whatever that pre-authorization number is that you have there and then hit okay. And our claim should submit properly that way. So there is nowhere um, when you're entering that information, when that pre-authorization comes back, there's nowhere to put that pre-authorization number and it populate onto that claim. Uh, no, it will not pre-populate. It's not okay. going to populate okay. by itself. There's no way to get it to go there. Uh, hold it. It, there's no way to get it there. Um, a couple things that you can do, and this is a good kind of thing to talk about. Within the chart, you know, you could create a line item. So I always have in my services uh, a way of doing um, some sort of note. I think I have it just under here. See how my, I have these uh, service codes called phasing and treatment plan phasing? Yes. Basically, that's a way that I can add a note to a service. So I could actually, and you could make one up that's just pre-auth. and include that so that you can see it in your notes. Okay. So that when you do the walkout, it's right there. Okay. And obviously you'd make sure that that doesn't go to, well, you can set it so it doesn't go to insurance, but right. then you can have that pre-authorization right there and available so that when you do the walkout, it's right there and you can see it. Okay, okay. Make that part of the treatment plan. Okay. All right, but there's no way to kind of make it part of it. Uh, one of the other things that I would do is in my imaging, All right, I would actually bring in the pre-D and I always yes. scan my documents and have my pre-D acquired from file and I had it on my desktop. 
that pre D. You can't see okay. it because my background was. We, up. We've been doing that also. Um, what we've also done is when that authorization comes in, we look mm -hmm. to see if they have an appointment. And if they do have an appointment, we go to that appointment. And we put that pre-authorization on that appointment also. Awesome. So the pretty number. Yes. I yes. love it. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. That's a really good idea. Um, and, and so everybody knows what we're talking about. I'll, let's walk through it. So you actually, when you go to schedule that SRP appointment for Hank, you were actually physically typing in that pre-D number here. Yes, and we've also got on that appointment what their services is gonna be for that day. Great, yeah. So that it pulls all that in there together. I love it. It's not gonna let me do it because I've already walked it out, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and again, you can see, remember that, that pre-auth number that I did as a service code? Yes. You could do the same thing there. Okay. So now you can see it's part of my notes. Okay. So, and that, you know, I love using those admin codes, I call them, because you know what, it's really difficult to lose that information, where yeah. if it's a note, anybody could sort of modify it, or if the patient moves, cancel the appointments and moves them or something like that, that might yeah. not be there. But an admin uh, code is going to stay as part of the process until we actually physically finish it, delete it, get rid of it. Somewhere. Right. So, okay. Yeah. So that makes sense to you? Yes. All right. Now. On your issue with the delete it, you know, I, the only thing I could tell you is look into using the fee schedules. Okay. Um, that does a, a number of different things. For one, it's going to get your estimations dead on. Okay. Um, two things, and we'll, we'll finish with the idea of the, the pre, you know, the services actually being um, scaling and route planning. So if you look at my this service codes, My SRP, um, I actually have my SRP set up as a service type minor perio, as opposed to osteosurgery, as opposed to clinical crown lengthening. So I have actually a separate category for those okay. kinds of things. Um, and that way I know that my calculations would be better when I'm doing um, SRP versus you can see my perio maintenance actually has its own separate category because sometimes perio maintenance might be covered at a different percentage. Okay. So once I put my fee schedules in, I know exactly from that 253 or based on the fee schedule, what my allowance is going to be uh, for that service. So that's where I need to dive into um, mm -hmm. how to enter the fee schedule, where to do that at. Okay. So let's and I, um, and I, we participate with Anthem, Delta Dental and United Healthcare. So those are the ones I would have to enter, correct? That's right. And well, and if you're Delta, you could have Delta PPO and Delta Premier based on what your, your participation level is. Each right. office would be different. So if you're Delta Premier, then yes, we're going to go up to list and fee schedule list and actually put in your Delta Dental PPO or Premier. Right. And what I do is I'm going to let's make one from scratch so you can just see the process. Okay. I always do it this way. I say um, individually set up the codes. Okay. because most offices don't use all 9,999 of the ADA codes. Right. So it doesn't make sense to go through and put the fee schedule in for every single one. So if you set it up individually, you can just kind of go through your list and say Delta Remember, you know, I always do last update and I would put in today's date, 924. So I know when this was last entered into the system. Okay. And then I start going down my codes, D0120, and putting in the allowance, my Delta allowance, which, you know, let's call it 13 bucks. Okay. <laughs> Delta's not very nice to us. D0150, nice. all right. And then actually physically putting in every single code. And Delta doesn't, I mean, Delta will not send you a allowance sheet. Um, you can get it through their website. Yes. All right. So that's way to get it. And if you, you know, if they say, if you can't find it on the website, you've got a stack of EOBs somewhere in the office and yes. you can just go through the stack of EOBs to get it, but go through that, type in exactly what they're going to allow the charge to be. And then you've got your allowance in. Okay. And so right. once I've get it there, where do I put it from there? Yep. So once you have it in your system under each employer, So here's my MetLife. 
each employer would have the, the fee schedule attached here. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Um, and one important thing you have to realize is, and this is always a good, good kind of process for everybody, um, do this on like um, the last day of September. Okay. So that every claim that is processed on October 1st going forward will have fee schedules attached to it and have the adjustment made at the time of service. Okay. All right. Really important because if you don't do it that way, what will happen is uh, you're not going to know, was this claim written off at the time of service or am I going to write this off when I'm doing the walkout? Okay. I mean, it might be clear if the patient only had one service done, but so if will not- So will it automatically write off? It will automatically write off. Wow. So when I do- a, <laughs> Yeah, based on that, every time I do a payment on an EOB, there's no write-off that has to be done. Okay. All right. Okay. And if you think about it, today, doctor comes in and sees an emergency patient, and we do a crown today. Yeah. So instead of it looking like I did $1,100 worth of services, I did $750 worth of, worth of services today because of the adjustment that was already right. previously made. So okay. I know today that we made $750. And in two weeks, I'm going to get seven, or I'm going to, well, I'm going to get 50% of that 750 back. Yeah. Huh. So it's really okay. an easier process. Your AR looks cleaner. Everything yes. looks cleaner. You don't have this weird outstanding accounts receivable for insurance because what you're getting is what you're actually getting. Okay. So. Makes sense. These schedules are great. Makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> we're getting there. We, we're getting there slowly, but surely. Uh, yeah, you know, and this is, I, I tell people all the time, fee schedules and coverage books are like weeding. You're always going to be doing it. You have the most beautiful lawn in the whole world. You're always going to be out there getting those dandelions, getting that, you know, the, getting that clover out of there because yeah. insurances change, people's plans change, things happen. You're going to have, have to constantly update it. But at the same time, if you're using fee schedules, they don't change that often. Right. You know, your Delta allowance doesn't change <laughs> for the right. most part. You know, it's glacier. So uh, now the only ones I need to put in there, though, are the ones that we participate, correct? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. So. All right. Easy peasy. Okay. So does I that help? That. Okay. Awesome. Thank yep. you. You're very welcome. I'm glad you. I'm glad we got a chance to do this, and hopefully yeah. everybody else. You know, if you have questions, make sure you're asking them because there are going to be nuances and all this, and this is just kind of a quick way to look at it. But yeah. you know, this is, again come up with a process and the more that you follow that process, the cleaner your outcomes are going to be over and over and over again. Yes. Yes, definitely. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you for hanging out with me today and doing this. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm sure you'll be hearing from me again. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Take care, Andre. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.